Adams. Well, but I'm, I, so, I, 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 oh my if God. there's evidence, I'd love to hear it. There's I don't a know. novel respiratory coronavirus overtaking Wuhan, China. What do we do? Oh, you know who we could ask? The Wuhan novel respiratory coronavirus lab. The disease is the same name as the lab. That's just, that's just a little too weird, don't you think? And then they I, ask I, those scientists, they're like, how did this... So wait a minute, you work at the Wuhan Respiratory Coronavirus Lab. How did this happen? And they're like, mm, a pangolin kissed a turtle. Tom Cotton a couple of days ago uh, spouting a conspiracy theory that the Chinese made yeah. this virus up. You have the lab and we'll there you go. In a lab, you have Rush Limbaugh every day, <clears throat> Presidential Medal, Freedom of Honor. It's hard to say this is the most reckless thing he's ever done. Those same agencies now have been tapped with investigating one of Trump world's most favorite conspiracy theories. New York Times reports this, quote, senior Trump administration officials have pushed American spy agencies to hunt for evidence to support an unsubstantiated theory that a government lab in Wuhan, China was the origin of the coronavirus outbreak. The FBI has for quite some time now assessed that the origins of the pandemic are most likely a potential lab incident in Wuhan. Let me step back for a second. You know, the FBI has folks, agents, professionals, analysts, virologists, microbiologists, etc., who focus specifically on the dangers of biological threats, which include things like novel viruses like COVID. Uh, and the concerns that they're in the wrong hands, some bad guys, a hostile nation state, a terrorist, a criminal, uh, the threats that those could pose. So here you're talking about a potential leak from a Chinese government controlled lab that killed millions of Americans. And that's precisely what that capability uh, was designed for. So let me give you the facts about the COVID lab leak origin story and let you determine whether this is just some right wing nut conspiracy or if there are some legitimate facts that make you think, well, hey, this may be a lab leak from China. So how did the COVID lab leak story go from conspiracy theory to mainstream? Well, let's start at the beginning. See, in December of 2019, a cluster of cases from a mysterious respiratory disease were reported in a Chinese city. That city was Wuhan. Now, the first trace of the virus that would kill millions of people started in Wuhan, China. Now, interestingly enough, the Wuhan Institute of Virology was located near where the outbreak occurred. And shockingly, they were researching novel coronaviruses like the one that killed millions of people. Now, in February 2020, at the beginning of the height of the pandemic, Senator Tom Cotton became one of the first high-profile politicians to say, hey, we have a novel coronavirus from Wuhan, China, and guess what also they have in Wuhan? They have this lab that studies novel coronaviruses in Wuhan, China. So this may be something we need to investigate. Get to the bottom of that. We also know that just a few miles away from that food market is China's only biosafety level four super laboratory that researches human infectious diseases. Now, we don't have evidence that this disease originated there, but because of China's du duplicity and dishonesty from the beginning, we need to at least ask the question to see what the evidence says. And China right now is not giving any evidence on that question at all. So, so this super lab that you referred to, this super lab is the only one of its kind in this area, in Wuhan, in the province, uh, th that, that area. And, and what do they do at this super lab? It's unclear, Maria. Uh, we have such laboratories ourselves in the United States run by our military in large part done for preventative purposes or trying to discover vaccines or to protect our own soldiers. China is obviously very secretive about what happens at the Wuhan laboratory. We don't know, again, where this virus originated. That's why it's so important that we at least ask the questions and get the evidence. But China continues to block our ability to ask those questions and get that evidence. So that is a very responsible statement, right? He's saying, hey, we don't know where the virus came from, but let's not put blinders on. They have a virology lab 
studying coronaviruses and we have an outbreak of guess what a coronavirus where the lab is at so let's not play dumb and let's determine if this was a lab leak or some other natural occurrence and china isn't being helpful that's what he said but now listen to how both msnbc and cnn spun what he said to make him sound like a conspiracy theorist check it out tom cotton a couple of days ago uh spouting a conspiracy theory to the chinese made yeah. this virus up you have the lab and we'll there you go. in a lab you have rush limbaugh every day <laughs> presidential medal freedom of honor it's hard to say this is the most reckless thing he's ever done tom cotton one of donald trump's staunchest allies in the senate suggested that the virus might have originated in a high security biochemical lab in china in the 1980s i remember when the far left trafficked in rumors about hiv having been invented in cia labs the far right has now found its own virus conspiracy theory. So now we're starting to see what happened. Conspiracy theory, right wing, maybe even a little racist, right? If you say a virus came from China, you're a little racist. It got to the point where even social media companies started censoring any talk about a lab leak. Remember, China has them by the ball. Here it is from Vox. Facebook doubles down on removing coronavirus conspiracy theories. Like it may have come from the... Wuhan lab. Here is Twitter banning Zero Hedge after he posted coronavirus conspiracy theory. What was that theory? That the virus may have originated in the Wuhan lab. Twitter even started censoring tweets that suggested COVID may have come from a lab. YouTube banned anyone from even suggesting it as medically unsubstantiated content. So at this point in time, if you even suggested, suggested that COVID originated from a lab in China, you were censored and banned from YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. You literally were censored off the internet for saying something that China didn't want you to say, even if you lived in America. So in March 2020, a group of scientists signed an open lever condemning, condemning the quote, conspiracy theory suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. It says, we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theory suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. Now, interestingly enough, Swiss scientists about this same time recreated the coronavirus that killed millions of people synthetically in a lab. They literally recreated the virus from scratch in a lab. Here is Senator Marco Rubio explaining. Um, in a lab that we know is involved in changing viruses synthetically so that they become infectious for humans, um, in a lab that diplomats have told us is unsafe, in a country that had a history of lab leaks, and by the way, in a virus that we know can be synthetically created because the Swiss did it. The Swiss created an exact replica of this virus in the lab uh, for purposes of answering it. So in April 2020, then President Donald Trump, who frequently called the coronavirus the China virus, put out there that, hey, this may have been a lab leak. And my question is, have you seen anything at this point that gives you a high degree of confidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was the origin of this virus? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And I think that the World Health Organization should be ashamed of themselves because they're like the public relations agency for China. And this country pays them almost $500 million a year, and China pays them $38 million a year. And uh, whether it's a lot or more, it doesn't matter. It's still they shouldn't be making excuses when people make horrible mistakes, especially mistakes that are causing hundreds of thousands of people around the world to die. But to everyone's surprise, Dr. Fauci said, no, it's a conspiracy theory that the coronavirus was created in a Chinese lab. Now, in January 2021, right before the transfer of power between President Trump and President Biden, the U.S. government in a fact sheet stated that some of the researchers in the Wuhan Institute of Virology became sick. Quote, the U.S. government has reason to believe that several researchers inside the Wuhan Institute of Virology became sick in the autumn of 2019 before the first identified cases of the outbreak, with symptoms consistent with both COVID-19 and common seasonal illnesses. This raises questions about the credibility of the Wuhan Institute of Virology senior researcher public claim that there was zero infection among the Wuhan Institute of Virology staff. So let's think about this. We have researchers from this Institute of Virology in Wuhan who have 
COVID-like symptoms and they get hospitalized with the COVID-like symptoms. And if you suggest that those researchers who were sick with COVID-like symptoms before the pandemic broke may have been the origin of the pandemic, you were erased from the internet. Insane. And this point has to be nailed home. It wasn't China that was censoring you. It was Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Google. Now, in February 2021, the World Health Organization investigated the source of COVID-19. And to everyone's surprise, not really, they said that it was a naturally occurring and, quote, extremely unlikely that it escaped from the Wuhan lab. And that conclusion was so shocking and against the evidence on the ground the Biden White House, I want to be very clear, this isn't the Trump White House, the Biden White House criticized it, saying the study was nonsense after reports China withheld data. Also in February, the journal Nature reported that some scientists had found a close relative of the COVID-19 virus in Thailand, specifically in bats in Thailand, leading to credibility that, hey, this was a naturally occurring thing and not a lab leak. Then in May, another group of scientists and another open letter said, hey, we got to investigate both because there is a lot of evidence that it's a naturally occurring thing, but there's a hell of a lot of evidence that it's a laboratory spillover. And until we have sufficient data for either one, we have to look into both. In October 2021, a declassified U.S. intelligence community assessment states that two hypotheses are plausible, natural exposure to an infected animal and a laboratory-associated incident. But the intelligence agencies remain divided on which hypothesis was correct. It also found China most likely did not develop the virus as a biological weapon. And most analysts have determined with low confidence that the virus wasn't genetically engineered. Now let's fast forward to July 2022. A peer-reviewed study published in the journal Science determined that human market in Wuhan, not a lab, was the most likely origin for the virus, citing the virus likely genetic mutations and the presence of infected people in the virus positive samples near the market. Then in October of that year, Senate Republicans released a report saying that most likely origin for the coronavirus was a research-related incident at a lab in China. Now, let me let you listen to Senator Marco Rubio questioning Dr. Anthony Fauci on this particular charge. And Senator Marco Rubio is going to lay out all the evidence on why the U.S. government believes that this was a lab leak and not a naturally occurring event. Check it out. SARS, we knew the host in four months. MERS, we knew the host in nine. We still don't know the, the, the host in, for COVID, even though, and China's not being transparent about it, even though they have a vested interest in producing the host so they can put all of us down. Um, in a lab that we know is involved in m changing viruses synthetically so that they become infectious for humans, um, in a lab that diplomats have told us is unsafe, in a country that had a history of lab leaks, and by the way, in a virus that we know can be synthetically created because the Swiss did it. The Swiss created an exact replica of this virus in the lab uh, for purposes of answering it. All these facts were available to us last May, last April. Why, I'll start with Dr. Fanny. Why, why did you dismiss the lab leak theory as, as credible? I have always said that the high likelihood is that this is a natural occurrence. I didn't dismiss anything. I just said it's a high likelihood that this is a natural occurrence from the environment of an animal reservoir that we have not yet identified. Well, and I still maintain that. But as, as I just mentioned in response to other questions, that since you don't know 100% about that, because no one knows, including me, 100% what the origin is, is the reason why we're in favor of further investigation. Well, given everything I've decided, and if, I, if anything I decided is incorrect, I, I hope it'll be correct that I'm relying, obviously it's not my field of study, so I'm relying on but what other experts in, have published. What is the basis for this like, high likely, what is the basis for the conclusion that it is likelier to have been naturally occurring than a lab accident? I asked a specific question to the Director of National Intelligence, and how I posed it is, is it not true that it is the assessment that they are equally likely based on our information that we have. So as I outline all of these things here, is she wrong when she answered me yes? 
and based on everything I've just cited, why the, what is it that we're basing the higher likelihood of naturally occurring? Is it simply because that's all we've ever seen in the past? Well, we have historical experience that happened with SARS-CoV-1. It happened with MERS. It happened with HIV. It happened with virtually all the influenza pandemics. So the historical basis for pandemics evolving naturally from an animal reservoir is extremely strong. And it's for that reason that we felt that something similar like this has a much higher likelihood. But again, getting back to what I said, and let me repeat so there's no lack of clarity in that, no one knows, not even I, 100% at this point, which is the reason why we are in favor of further investigation. But going back to precedent, the, the precedents require them to be similar. The difference between this one and that one is, in, as I said, four months we knew the host for SARS, and nine months we knew the host for MERS. China has all the incentive in the world to produce this host and hasn't done so. And then you add up all these other things. I mean, is it just a coincidence that happened in the city that's doing this kind of research, which, by the way, is controversial. I know you and others have been supportive of it, but, but it's controversial. It's not widely accepted as, as, as good. My whole point is there are people out there who had Facebook posts taken down, were called kooks, conspiracy theorists, for saying publicly a year ago what we now say may be possible. And I think those people deserve an apology at a minimum. So now we've gone from a world where if I would have made this video two years ago, it would have been removed from YouTube, I would have been banned from Twitter, banned from Facebook. If wherever you're watching this video, it would have been banned. My account would have been struck, it had been horrible. And I would have been called a conspiracy theorist. Now, the FBI and the energy department also agree with this conspiracy theory that it's most likely a lab leak. The FBI more so than other agencies. Now, there are four other agencies in the intelligence community who don't want to be publicly named, so we don't know who those agencies are, but they suggest that COVID-19 likely came from natural causes. And they make sure to say that it's with low confidence. So agencies who don't even want to put their name behind this are saying, well, we think it may have come about naturally, but we're not gonna put our names to it. And then you have two agencies, the FBI and Energy Department saying, no, we'll put our name to it. This was a lab leak. And the CIA is uncertain. Oh, we don't know if it's a lab leak. So now let me know what you feel in the comments section. Do you think this was a lab leak based on the evidence or do you think this occurred naturally? Let me leave you with John Stewart's opinion because I think he nails it. It's I'm, coffee. I wouldn't I'm, do that I'm to you. I wouldn't for, do that to you. I'm so what, what do you, takes, well, what, do you what, 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 what do you mean by that? Do you mean like well, so this was perhaps a, was, there's, there's a chance that this was created in a lab, there's an investigation? A chance? Well, but I, so, I, 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 oh my if God. there's evidence, I'd love to hear it. There's I just don't a know. novel respiratory coronavirus overtaking Wuhan, China. What do we do? Oh, you know who we could ask? The... Wuhan novel respiratory coronavirus lab. The disease is the same name as the lab. That's just, that's just a little too weird, don't you think? And then they I, ask I, those scientists, they're like, how did this, so wait a minute, you work at the Wuhan respiratory coronavirus lab. How did this happen? And they're like, mm, a pangolin kissed a turtle. <laughs> and you're like, no, I, you, you, the wait, name wait, of your lab, wait. if you look at the name, Look at the name. Can I, let me see your business card. Show me your business card. Oh, I work at the coronavirus lab in Wuhan. Oh, because there's a coronavirus loose in Wuhan. How did that happen? Maybe a bat flew into the cloaca of a turkey and then it sneezed into my chili and now we all have coronavirus. Like, come on. Okay, 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 okay. Wait a second, wait a what second. What about this? What about this? Listen to this. Wait a second. All right. John. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's been an outbreak of chocolatey goodness near Hershey, Pennsylvania. What do you think happened? Like, oh, I don't know. Maybe a steam shovel made it with a cocoa bean. Or it's the chocolate factory. Maybe that's it. That could be.